All right, we're back. And it looks like the timer has started. Time to clear some memory. But we got Wayfinders Party Time Pilsner right here. And uh, you can get a look at that trippy label with the uh, rainbow throughout. Um, definitely some good stuff right there. This is a Bavarian style Pilsner in their own words. And it looks like they, they tell us a foam crowned lively beer with a fine hint of noble hops clear and golden with a crisp dry spritzy finish pairs well with fun all right 5.3 and you can see you got the uh, 5.3 abv and they prefer a flute and so that is what we're going to be doing today go ahead and crack this damn thing and they prefer a lager flute so that's what we're going to be doing today Let's see if I can uh, pour this appropriately. There it is. Uh, I was a little bit worried it was going to run us over, but it looks like we got it. So there we go. Got the Pilsner flute. Very effervescent. You can see the carbonation rolling there. A nice uh, bubbly head. Nothing uh, too crazy though. Nice golden color, just as they mentioned. On the top, you do get a little bit of those uh, noble hops coming through. Nothing, uh, nothing too bold and banging, but it does smell good. Mm. And that's just phenomenal. That's just fucking spot on. It does have kind of like a spicy floral thing going on. Slightly slightly just slightly sweet and dry very nice and the thing about having a uh, flute is that it concentrates the nose um, for those more delicate aromas good stuff right there all right let's get into it we got first canadian shave motherfucker <laughs> and this one right here is uh based off Creed's Millicene Imperial and it's got the uh the nice artwork reminiscent of uh the movie. There's a look at the soap there. This one was given to me by my boy Brian at the Wet Shave Experience. This wasn't working for his wife <laughs> and so it it sadly had to leave the household. And I think this one was given to him by a friend as well. So it's mine now, and I, I don't foresee it going anywhere. Uh, this is part of their uh, Buffalo Milk soap base. So you can see that's their uh, kind of prominent ingredient. It's product of Canada. Nice side label, uh, the whole nine yards, four ounces. This is some good stuff. All right, I have it already, already whipped up there in my uh, Thirsty Badger Shave Bowl, another wonderful product of Canada. You can see the underside, very intricate, white, black, red. And if this wasn't full of luxurious, creamy lather, you'd be able to see the intricate design on the inside as well. Really good stuff there. And then we have our Wolf Whiskers Custom right here with the red and black on bottom and the white and red on top. And then since it's BBS.Live's um, Synthetic Week, hashtag Synthetic Week, I figured I'd bust this out because it has a blood knot, a uh, synthetic knot on it. So you can kind of see the red tips poking through the top there. Really cool stuff. All right. So I think what I'm going to do first here, I'm going to take some Hendrix Classics and Company Mentholator and... Uh, if you've seen this I've used this quite a few times now um, basically it's like a beeswax balm um, type situation but it's a menthol concentrate and so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna take my finger let my body heat kind of uh, emulsify the beeswax and if you can see it's kind of a uh, starting to build up on my finger it's starting to get a little bit of a shine and I'm just going to apply it directly to the skin. This, um, this application method I found just seemed to work 
the best um, in terms of giving me the chill that I desire, but not taking away from um, the lather. Because menthol alone is known to be a bit of a uh, lather killer. And so this right here, um, letting me like emulsify it and put it directly to the skin, it kind of lets it do its job without having a big impact on the lather. I was kind of struggling with this product. I made multiple videos on it when I first arrived in the den. Um, so there is that. But this method right here I found just worked best for the product. And Pete is back on the drawing board trying to find new ways to make this product um, optimal. You know, improved to the best of his abilities. And I really appreciate that about Pete. He just, he took the criticism and got kind of right back to the drawing board. You know what I mean? He didn't, uh, he didn't dwell on the negative too long. He just kind of went right back to the drawing board and he took some of my feedback. And so I really look forward to seeing um, what comes of this product in the future. And I'll be sure to pick it up because I want to support Pete from Hendrix Classics and his endeavors. I really uh, am a fan of his alternative thinking, bringing new thoughts and ideologies to the uh, wet shaving space. Not just doing the same old, same old. And so, uh, I support that, and I really do wish the best for Pete. I know he had a little bit of a medical issue come up over the weekend, so I hope he's having a uh, quick and rapid recovery. I'm kind of try to work that in, that way the lather's not sitting on top of the uh, menthol bomb. But, as you can see, the lather still seems to be holding up, so that's a good sign. Let me go ahead and uh, get a little bit up here. I want to kind of beat it in a little bit. It's a little bit harder to work it in when you have a full beard, but it is what it is. We'll do the best we can. It looks like we blooped a little bit onto the counter. So we'll add that in as well. We definitely got plenty of lather in the shave bowl, so that's not going to be an issue whatsoever. Alright. Yeah, looks a little, little tiny bit pasty, so I want to just paint in just a hair of moisture right there. Just dip the tips and kind of paint in a little water. All right, that should do it. And then, in honor of uh, J-Mac, the Red Island Shaver, he likes his uh, Gillette Fat Boy razor. And this is kind of the yin to the yang with that. This is actually a Gillette Slim Adjustable, a vintage DE razor. And it has the, uh, the twist opening there. So I'll show you. How it kind of opens and the inside of the mechanism there. Let me just grab a random blade from the <laughs> from the blade grave over here. Well, I guess this one only has about one shave on it, but I'm gonna be going with a uh, Gillette seven o'clock green right here. We'll go ahead and twist the bottom to close the gate, and it looks like we got a nice even reveal there. Very nice rose gold and charcoal color. And I think we're going to go with the 5 setting, which is a like perfect medium. These old razors are kind of known for being a little bit, um, a little bit, uh, they don't really get too aggressive, even on the higher setting. So this should be good. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Now, I haven't used this razor in a while. So I guess it's also a plus for me. Breaking it out and giving it some use, love, and attention. 
<clears throat> it's definitely a good razor. I gave it, uh, or I actually bought it already customed. I thought the colorway was fucking fantastic. It's from a, a razor a razor restoration shop called Delta Echo Razor Works, no longer with us, out of business. But uh, they used to do really good stuff, and regardless of how they handled business on their way out, uh, their products kind of speak for themselves. <clears throat> really good looking products. And the finish on this one has held up well over the uh, multiple years I've owned it and multiple uses that I've put it through, so that's good. It's feeling very smooth. I was able to uh, work that lather in down to the skin level past the menthol balm. And so, absolutely no problems with slickness or anything like that. Very nice. Now, if you were sensitive to menthol, I, you know, I wouldn't really recommend this application method, but if you can deal with medium menthol strength or you consider yourself a menth head that likes high menthol strength, then this application method I would uh, definitely recommend to you guys that, you know, are fans of menthol and the chill that it brings to your shave. All right. <clears throat> so no problems right there on that first pass. Very smooth. Let me just clean up the bottom there. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the scent on this one. I'd say it's probably about a 6 out of 10. Nice scent strength. Um, approaching bold and banging. Trademark. Um, but if you're unaware of Creed's Millicene Imperial, this is a high-end, expensive luxury cologne. And it is um, kind of like a beautiful citrus aquatic vibe. The aquatic nature kind of has like a a sparkling, salty, briny type quality to it. It really makes the scent like almost effervescent. And then the medley of citrus notes just make it into a really beautiful unisex type fragrance. This one right here is perfect for like the spring and summer just because of its uh, bright, fresh nature. Definitely, definitely, definitely an enjoyable scent. That is for sure. Um, like I said in my mail call video, I have the real deal Creed Millicene Imperial. And I also have um, a dupe that's much cheaper. But, um, you know, th it's the same scent more or less. All right, let's paint a little bit more lather in. So when it comes to the, uh, the chill on this, since the menthol isn't incorporated into the lather, I don't think it's gonna get any stronger on pass two. Um, I would really be highly surprised if it became stronger on pass two. But um, right off the rip, applying it directly to the skin. Brought it to a like a, just a right below medium, if not medium, um, chill factor. Which is perfect for like daily shaves, you know what I mean? Nothing crazy, no, no like outlandish chill level. Just like a nice, a nice medium chill factor. So if you're, like I said, if you're, a fan of menthol and you fancy yourself a menth head you can handle at least medium saint uh, medium chill factor shave soaps
applying it directly to the skin is probably gonna be for you. Let me see if I can scrape some of this soap off the edges here. Get full utilization of what we got going on. <clears throat> That's good. Good stuff right there. Probably uh maybe just a hair dry, but I don't really give two dams or a fuck. Alright, let's get this second pass going. And one thing I notice about applying the menthol directly to the skin, normally mentholated soaps or aftershave products don't really affect my eyes that much. I'm not over here like, fuck, <laughs> you know, like my eyes aren't burning from the menthol. Um, but I do notice more of a tingle with this balm applying it directly to the skin before the lather hits the skin. I do notice more of a tingle. I'm still not like struggling, but I feel it. All right, against the grain. Now in pass two, I do think the chill level kind of died down a little bit. It went from right around medium to just under medium once I got the second application of lather on, which is fine. I suppose if I wanted to reapply menthol on the second pass, I could. It's kind of a, a pain in the ass, but there is a little bit of chill lingering on pass two at skin level. And so it kind of is like a a short high, a short buzz, but it still does what it's supposed to do. I'll tell you one thing, definitely applying the menthol directly to the skin definitely gets you nice and rosy, that's for sure. <laughs> definitely gets the skin tone nice and nice and red, but it, I, I promise you that'll go away. You know what I mean? Definitely. If you're, if you're worried about, um, overdoing it, start off with a little bit of product and then kind of work your way up depending on how your skin reacts to it. Always err on the side of, uh, safety. Very smooth. I don't think this Gillette seven o'clock green is my favorite blade. It does have just a touch of roughness to it. Whereas other Gillette blade options seem to be um, more smooth throughout. This is only the second use of this blade, so I definitely don't think, oh, did I get a weeper on pass one? I must've got a weeper on pass one. I didn't even fucking catch that. Um, Hmm. Must have ran over something or used too much pressure, perhaps. Anyways, but yeah, this blade, it does seem to have just a touch more roughness than other Gillette blade options, in my opinion. But still, still not that bad, you know? Not that bad. Most Gillette blade options are to my liking. <clears throat> Is this one here not my favorite? Would it get me by? Sure, but definitely not one I think I'll be buying more of, especially considering the amount of options we have um, as DE shavers. All right, let's put that to the side. We will Rinse off the face and get into a little bit of post shave. All right. I can definitely see just by, you know, looking at the time of the shave, I can definitely see that applying that menthol in that fashion definitely adds um, a little bit of time to the clock. I'm usually never in a hurry when I'm doing these shaves because I'm, you know, shaving after work while I'm winding down. 
So it's really not that I'm in any rush whatsoever. And I recommend that you make time for your shaves and not be in a rush. But some people, you know, they have to do it before work and every minute counts. I understand. Um, but that little, just that little extra step, I feel like can be improved about this product. Something can be improved. <clears throat> that is not ideal. All right, let's grab a uh, let's grab a Lancaster towel here. There we go. Get that off of there. I'll have to remember to clean that up afterwards. We go Lancaster red today. Avoid the eyes. Big news! I saw I saw Lancaster and the Razor Company. TRC, a wet shaving retailer, if you're not aware. Uh, I saw that they both announced on their social medias an upcoming collaboration, uh, specifically with the towels. So, if you've been having a hard time getting one, maybe in the uh, near future, you'll be able to pick one up at uh, TRC. Instead of, you know, trying your luck on Etsy on a Lancaster drop. So that'd be pretty cool. That'd, that'd definitely be something that I'd like to, uh, like to see. Alright, let's get a little bit of aftershave on. We'll get the rest of the soap out of the beard off camera. So, here we go. First Canadian shave. Motherfucker. <laughs> Matching aftershave splash. I am a fan of their, uh, aftershaves. They kind of got uh, a nice mix of uh, skin food here and a quality industry standard restrictor. That's what we like to see. A very uh, opaque, white, milky color to this aftershave. Oh, yeah. And that definitely feels very soothing. I think this is a non-alcohol aftershave, and that's how it can be imported to... Uh, to the US from Canada. All right. So this one went a little bit longer than normal, but if you stuck around to the end, I appreciate you. That was a wonderful shave through and through. So, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you, and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.